Before going to learn about theoretical probability, let's learn about equally likely events first. Equally likely events. If we toss a coin on plain surface, the coin can only land in one of two possible ways, either heads up or tails up. So we can say that the outcomes of heads and tails are equally likely. Now let's look at another example. If we throw a dice, each of these numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 have same possibility of showing up. So the equally likely outcomes of throwing a dice are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Let's discuss an example of equally likely events. Suppose a bag contains one red ball, one green ball, and one blue ball, and we draw a ball without looking into the bag. What are the outcomes? Are the outcomes a red ball, a green ball and a blue ball equally likely? The outcome can be a red ball, or a green ball or a blue ball. Yes, the outcomes are equally likely, because there is an equal chance of getting all three colors. Let's now discuss an example on not equally likely events. Suppose that a bag contains one red ball, four green balls, and one blue ball, and we draw a ball without looking into the bag. What are the outcomes? Are the outcomes a red ball, a green ball and a blue ball equally likely? Since there are four green balls, only one blue ball, and one red ball, you would agree that we are more likely to get a green ball than a blue ball or a red ball. So, the outcomes of getting a green ball, or a red ball, or a blue ball are not equally likely events. Let us now see the need for theoretical probability. If we just recall, that experimental probability is found, by repeating an experiment, and observing the outcomes. We saw the example of tossing a coin, repeating up to 24,000 times, and we calculated experimental probability. But, how about repeating the experiment of launching a satellite, in order to compute, the empirical probability of its failure during launching? Can we do satellite launching experiment, repeating up to 24,000 times, and calculate experimental probability? No it is almost impossible, because launching a satellite is very expensive. It is not easy as tossing coin experiment. Here. Repeating an experiment is expensive, or unfeasible in many situations. In the situations, where repetition of an experiment is not possible, there we are making certain assumptions. These assumptions help in directly calculating the exact probability that means theoretical probability. The assumption of equally likely outcomes, is one such assumption that leads us, to the following definition of theoretical probability of an event. The theoretical probability of an event E, written as P of E, is defined as P of E equals number of favorable outcomes divided by total number of possible outcomes. Here we assume that the outcomes of the experiment are equally likely. We will briefly refer to theoretical probability as probability. Let's understand with an example. Find the probability of getting ahead when a coin is tossed once. Also find the probability of getting a tail. Solution, since coin has only two sides, there are only two possible outcomes, when we flip it. It will either land on heads or tails. When we flip a coin, the number of outcomes favorable to the event E, of getting ahead is 1. As we know that theoretical probability P of E equals number of favorable outcomes divided by, total number of possible outcomes. The probability of the event, of getting ahead that is, P of E, equals P of head, equals 1 by 2. Similarly, the number of outcomes favorable to event of getting a tail is 1. The probability of the event, of getting a tail that is, P of E, equals P of tail, equals 1 by 2. Now, what do you observe from the theoretical probability values of getting heads or tails? Is the experimental probability value? always the same as the theoretical probability value? Before going to answer this question, we should know the law of large numbers. Law of large numbers. The law of large numbers was first published in 1713 by Jacob Bernoulli. 
It is a fundamental concept for probability and statistics. This law states that, as the number of trials increase, the experimental probability will get closer, and closer to the theoretical probability. We can observe this in our tossing coin examples, using experimental probability, where the result is shown in the table. Recall that, experimental probability of any event is calculated, by using the formula that is, P of event, equals number of trials, in which the event happened divided by, total number of trails. Let's recall toss in coin example using theoretical probability. We got the theoretical probability values of getting a head or tail as P of E equals P of head equals 1 by 2 equals 0 0.5. Whereas the value using the experimental probability is 0 0.5005. P of E equals P of tail equals 1 by 2 equals 0 0.5. Whereas the value using the experimental probability is 0 0.4995. We observe that theoretical probability and experimental probability values are almost the same. Let's see an example using both probabilities. A bag contains a red marble, a blue marble and a green marble, all the marbles being of the same size. Marbles should be taken out from the bag without looking into it. What is the probability of taking? Green marble, red marble, blue marble. Compare both experimental theoretical probabilities. First we will solve using theoretical probability. Theoretical probability is defined by the formula. P of E equals number of favorable outcomes divided by total number of possible outcomes. 